uh, bonjour Paris. Uh, ho hopefully we are awake and we kind of understand uh, what is GraphQL and the main benefits of it. So today I'm gonna do a live coding session. So it's gonna be like 20 minutes live coding. So let's hope that everything goes well. So my talk is end-to-end -end typeset GraphQL application. I'm Carlos, I'm a software consultant. And the GraphQL Hong Kong organizer, I'm coming from all the way from China. So I've got 13 hours flight and I didn't sleep that much. I, I'm kind of like facing jet lag yet, but it's fine. And at the beginning of this year, I created the SpaceX GraphQL API. And if you have any questions, you wanna receive more information about me, you can find me on the internet at, at swcarlosaria. So the agenda for today, it is gonna be first, we're gonna see GraphQL and TypeScript, and we're gonna jump in the live coding, uh, live code, so that's what we're gonna do, and hopefully you, you're gonna like as well. And uh, so we're gonna, we gonna see how a GraphQL server in JavaScript looks like, and then we are gonna evolve into TypeScript to see the main benefits, and we are gonna do the same with the GraphQL client. We are gonna get the real applications and from JavaScript, and then evolve to TypeScript. Cool, so GraphQL and TypeScript, why they, they match that well together? Like, I really want to appreciate like, our folks, Jesse and Andre, that they gave this incredible introduction to GraphQL and also type safety, so I can skip some slides, but uh, basically if you guys, you don't know what is TypeScript, basic problem per se that you know JavaScript, but TypeScript is a type superset of, of JavaScript, so JavaScript with types. And in GraphQL, we've got, by specification, a uh, GraphQL uh, schema. So we got to define which entry points and entry fields we got to uh, uh, be able to request to our servers. So we can see here that we've got to declare like entry query point as hero, and they're going to have like, some GraphQL primitive types and all the, all, all also GraphQL complex types. Because GraphQL by specification is introspectable, as Jesse had mentioned before, we are gonna be able to explore our API. And this is gonna allow us to have incredible, uh, uh, powerful tooling in order to achieve an, a, a superb uh, developer experience. So Sam, don't miss the last talk, uh, because it's kind of like blow mining. Um, Sam. Uh, let's say that we are gonna have in try to internalize this concept of single software. We're gonna have our schema definition with our types, and from there we are gonna extend all our types through our whole application, let's say, backend and front end. And what that's what we're gonna do today in the live coding. So we are gonna be using uh, the GraphQL code gen. So props to uh, the company that they created this stuff is totally open source. And you can now generate TypeScript type, flow type, React component, type safe, and uh, MongoDB, there are models, like a lot of stuff. So uh, 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 props to the guild uh, uh, for making this uh, 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 able to use it and it's totally open source. So we are gonna out generate types based on our GraphQL implementation. So that's it, let's do, uh, let's, let's jump in the live coding. Uh, so we are gonna be using uh, the SpaceX GraphQL API. So if you guys like rockets, I really recommend you to check it out so you can just like get all the information from the SpaceX. So uh, 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 go check it out in api.spaceX.lang slash GraphQL. And also you are gonna have a REST API, which basically is a now to generate uh, totally like fully typed and fully documented REST API from the GraphQL schema. And also we are gonna see how we can do that. All the repo is in github.com slash Aspects, excellent. So, okay, cool. Let's open the IDE and uh, we're gonna check first like how the server looks like. Uh, we're gonna see all the stuff and then we're gonna jump into the client. So in the server, even if you are not a JavaScript developer, uh, you are gonna be able to understand this uh, live current. So we're gonna have like different like, like folders, context, schema, server types, and URL, and index. So in the index, uh, we are gonna have our GraphQL and our REST uh, server. So let's just go quickly to the server and we're gonna see the REST. So as I've, seen, as I've mentioned before, we are gonna be using this open source library called SOFA to auto-generate a REST API based in the GraphQL schema. So you are gonna define your GraphQL schema and your type definition and you are gonna fully auto-generate your REST API within 34 lines, which is incredible. So you can get the best of the both worlds, like the GraphQL with the benefits of overfetching, underfetching, and as, as well, you can auto-generate a REST API in order to progressive, progressively inc uh, uh, migrate your existing REST endpoint to the GraphQL. Uh, and you can see here that we're gonna use OPN and Swagger 
in order to auto-generate the, the, the API and also the documentation for it, passing only the schema and using uh, this incredible library. Cool, but we are here to talk about GraphQL, so uh, we're gonna see how a GraphQL server looks like. So if we go to the GraphQL server, we are gonna find that we are gonna be using the Apollo server. And basically we have to pass two uh, parameters, which is the schema and the context. So if we see, if we go to the context, basically we are gonna have some utils, uh, find, limit, offset, order, and sorting and stuff, and then we are gonna have a, a database. In order to understand for you guys how we are gonna fetch the data from the SpaceX, uh, so the community, uh, they've created this MongoDB uh, database, uh, public, and anybody can access to it with all the real data from the SpaceX. Uh, so even like if you want to do like some, some, some stuff with it, like go feel free to, to, to get the data from that. So we are going to just connect to the Mongo client on this database and we are going to just create the GraphQL server and we're going to just fetch the data from that. Cool. Uh, so we've got the, already the context and the server and the types. We're going to have just in the moment like the, 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 the context types and then we are going to auto-generate all our schema types. And the UT is the same. We're going to have the filters with the fine limit and offsets and stuff. Cool. Uh, so now uh, we are going to see our schema. So our schema looks like this. So we're going to have, uh, let's say, our data models of our uh, uh, database. So basically, what I've done here is go through the different models that I've got in, that I found out in the Mongo database and create a folder for it. So we're going to have, let's say, capsules in SpaceX. We're going to have uh, launches. We're going to have missions and probably we we're going to have rockets. So uh, first, we have to declare our type definitions. So what we are going to find here is that first, we want to uh, define the query entry points. Uh, as we have mentioned before, in GraphQL, we have query to fetch data, mutation to mutate data, modify data, and subscription to subscribe to data. Today, we are going to just fetch data. So we are going to see here that we've got queries, and then we've got two entry points. If we think in the rest world, probably let's say that we're going to get slash rockets, and we are going to get uh, a re a the returning type has to be a type rocket, and it's going to be an array. And that is going to contain some arguments to lim limit offset the results. And let's say if we want to get one single rocket, so we're going to do, let's say, rocket slash ID in the rest world. And in GraphQL, we are going to just say rocket, and we are going to pass an argument that is going to be ID. It has to be required, makes sense, right? We gotta just get one rocket and we are gonna return one rocket. And then we have to also specify the different fields that we are gonna be able to get and their types. So we can see here that those fields, they could be GraphQL primitive types as a Boolean integer string, or there could be um, complex GraphQL types. But if you just like look down like rocket engines, it's gonna be another type with their primitive types. So I think kind of like intuitive, and uh, that's what I like from, from, from GraphQL. Cool. So now we have to see how we are going to return data where we are like, asking for rockets. So if we go to the resolvers, we are going to find out that we are going to have a query. So let's say when we are finding a query type and we are asking for rockets, we are going uh, uh, to do this. And I'm pretty sure that you are going to be able to understand it. So we are going to get the database from the context. We are going to go to our collection, in this case it's rugged. We are going to do some finding, sorting, skipping, and limiting. And we are going to just return it to array. And that data is whatever we are going to return when we are asking for rocket. So I think we go to the database, we get the data, and we just return it. So kind of straightforward. And the same with the rocket. So we connect with the database, and then we go to our collection rocket. We are going to find by ID, we are going to just limit it to one, we are going to convert it to array, and in JavaScript we can destructure it, uh, uh, the, the first element, so we are going to just return one single object. So this is pretty cool, and I think it's kind of a strip, pretty, pretty straightforward, so we are going to just like, run the server, CD server, I'm going to do yarn start, and we are going to see how a GraphQL API looks like uh, with GraphQL. So now we are going to get uh, the, uh, hopefully we are going to get the, the API running here localhost. Let's hope so. And, 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 and we, can, we, can, we can move forward. Uh, so, whoa, whoa. let's try again and see if this works. Let's hope so. Cool. If not, I can go to the production ready uh, GraphQL API in So, okay, I can go to here and API, API, do specs, do slant, and we can just check it out. Cool. 
let's say this work. Uh, okay, awesome. Yeah, for some reason my internet is not working that well. It looks like it's working. Sorry for this. Awesome. Okay, uh, so let's uh, let's 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 go to the next step. Uh, we have. We have already seen like uh, what a GraphQL uh, API looks like with GraphQL, so we are gonna keep going in the database. Cool. So now what I'm gonna do is like I'm just gonna evolve my API. So basically, what that's what we do in our day to day, right? Like we have our API and we want to evolve it. So uh, I'm gonna go to GitHub and I'm gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna use this visual code extension in order to fetch the pull request. So I, we, I can see here if the internet works. If not, I gotta go to try it. Okay, it works. Okay, so someone have created this uh, pull request, which is add raw dependent query field. So I'm gonna check out the branch, and I'm gonna see the diff. So we can see the diff here that we have created this new query field called raw dependent name. That is gonna have a name. It's gonna be in a string, and it's gonna be required, and it's gonna return just a single rocket. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the same, that decent point. And also we can see here that we have changed the ID from lowercase to uppercase. Okay, let me try to run again the server. Let's hope that it's gonna work eventually. And uh, so, okay, so what we're gonna do, I've already like checked out this branch, so now if I go back to my type devs, I'm gonna say my resolvers, my type devs, I'm gonna see the new query fields. Okay, uh, so now I want to, uh, what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna auto-generate all the TypeScript type, basically in my GraphQL schema, in order to get auto-completion in my resolver from that new evolution. Uh, so um, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna open a new tab, I'm gonna do yarn generate, go to the server first, yarn generate, and I'm gonna load, let's hope that it's gonna work, uh, I'm gonna load the GraphQL schema and I'm gonna generate all the TypeScript type for that schema. So we're gonna see in the div, hopefully, the changes. And uh, we are gonna just, uh, okay, here we've got. So we're gonna have all this huge file that is gonna contain more than 5,000 lines, like around like yeah, 4,000 something lines. Because if we want to type our application, the first type that we wanna use is some, some, some of those that we don't have to write manually. We want to auto-generate as much as possible in order to achieve a consistent state of our application in our types. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now, let me try again uh, if the, uh, the server works. I'm not sure why it's not working, but yeah. Let me just go and try again. So let's go to the server and start it. And uh, so basically what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna return my resolver data. So if the, if the API works, what, what, what is gonna happen is when I'm trying to uh, uh, fetch the rocket, just a single rocket, uh, here I'm gonna get an error because we have changed the type definition from ID lowercase to uppercase. So here we are trying to find a ID uppercase and we cannot find it, so we are gonna find by null, and we are gonna return a null when, whenever we know that that rocket exists. And that's a problem because we are having an inconsistent uh, state of our API, which is gonna lead a lot of problems in both in our front end, engineering team, as well in the back end. Uh, so, cool, so what I'm gonna do here, because for some reason this doesn't work, uh, join the and uh, so I'm gonna type the query solver. So I'm gonna do, uh, query resolver the resolvers, and what is gonna happen in runtime, I'm gonna get auto-completion about the errors that I'm gonna have in my application. So in this case, as I've already declared that ID is gonna be like uppercase, so as I'm typing all my backend side, I'm gonna have that runtime check. So I don't have to wait until that code goes to production because if you look here, everything looks fine, and then you send this to production and then something broken it, and then someone is gonna tell you that you gotta change it, and that's a problem. But if you can have a runtime, so before sending this code to production, you're gonna, oh, this is not gonna work because this is this is this is wrong. So basically, what if, if we wanna like 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 just fix it? We we are gonna just delete it. We're gonna do control space. We're gonna have auto completion about the types that we're gonna have available in that argument, and we are gonna just uh, fix it quickly. Also, if we want to evolve our 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 our, our, our API, so let's say that we have created this new uh, field. Um, 
even I don't want to go to documentation. I think we are almost in 2020 and we have incredible tools in order to achieve this incredible developer experience. So I just want to do control space. I, I, I know that someone has created this rocket by name, so I'm going to just try to find it. Oh, there is a rocket by name. This is going to be an async function that is going to have, that is going to return something like this. And what we're going to do, what, what, what we're going to do is like we are not going to use the object. In the arguments also, I don't have to go to the documentation to see the arguments. I'm going to do just destructure it, control space, and I'm going to get a name that even I know that is in a string. So I'm going to get the name, and the same with the content. I can destructure it and just click control space, and I'm going to get the database. So from the database, I'm going to go to my rocket collection. I'm going to fill in by name, and then I'm going to get that data. So when I'm saving this, I know that if I run in my, oh, now the server is working, cool. So now if I'm running my server, I'm going to be sure that the code that I've or the new evolution of my API that I've implemented is going to be working as expected, and it's going to return the data that I want to, to have. Uh, cool. Uh, so yeah, we can we can just uh, check here. This is the GraphQL uh, API uh, for SpaceX. So even we've got this incredible like, explore uh, uh, gra GraphQL explore uh, plugin created by the One GraphQL. So don't miss uh, the lost talk. Uh, Sin is going to be t talking about this stuff. Uh, let's say that we want to get rockets, and, and then we're going to have the, the we, you can add here as, as many as many fields if you want, so ID, mask, name. And I think it's pretty kind of intuitive. And then when you click play, you're going to get the results here as we have seen before. Cool. So now we are going to move to the, um, to the client side. Awesome. So we're going to exit here. We're going to stop this. And I'm going to just go back to the initial state of the application. Cool. So now we are going to go to the client side. Uh, even if you're the same, if you don't know JavaScript, I'm pretty sure that you're going to get it like super quickly. Uh, so uh, what we're going to get right now is a React application. And uh, we are going to have, in order to fetch data from uh, uh, clients from uh, from application, we are going to use, in this case, Apollo client, where we just have to pass the URI, uh, which is, in this case, the production ready space as GraphQL API. And we are going to we're going to use the React Apollo hooks Apollo provider, passing that client instance. And we are going to just like lazy load the application. So when we go to the application, even if we don't know about like like uh, uh, GraphQL at all, or like I don't know, like JavaScript at all, uh, we kind of like understand what is the HTML. And so we can see here that we are going to get some launch pass, and, and we are going to map it. Uh, and we're going to have a mission name and details and league and rocket. And we are going to just uh, display an H3 with a mission name, a rocket name, a paragraph with details, and one image. And now we are going to see how this works. Just let me just do this just for a sec. And then we can continue. Cool. Uh, so now I'm just going to run the client. Let's hope that is going to work this time. And we are going to wrap up uh, to finish this talk. So I'm going to go to the client. I'm going to just do yarn start. And uh, yeah, let's hope that it's going to run. Uh, and OK, so cool. Like we can see here that we are displaying ID, uh, the mission name, and, and the details and the link and the rocket. So that's the data that I want to ask for. I don't want to get more than that. So we can see here the GraphQL query where we are going to have, we are going to put uh, the query name. It's going to get launches. We are going to ask for the past launches of SpaceX. We are going to limit it to 10 of them. And we are going to get just the data that we are requesting for. So ID, mission name, details, link image, and the rocket name. So let's see. OK, we've got it, and it's working. So uh, we can see here the header, the mission name of the SpaceX. And we can see uh, the rocket, which is the Falcon 9, the description, and the images. And I don't know, guys, if you like the rockets, but for me, it's kind of like inspiring that uh, these guys, they are able to uh, you know, like put this like, rocket on the orbit bit and then land them back and reuse the, the rockets. So, I don't know, for me, it's super, super, super incredible. Cool. Uh, so in order to finish this talk, because probably I'm running out of time, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to auto-generate the TypeScript type for my GraphQL queries, in this case, this query, and I'm going to ty type my returning data. And with that data, I'm going to get auto-completion about uh, uh, the data that I can display. And, and I'm going to get like some. Uh, like runtime check 
as, for example, like let's say that we have ragged, uh, because you know it looks like everything is cool and you don't have like any errors here, but then you go to your, to your, to your uh, uh, UI and it's broken, and that can happen, right? It's like Friday, 4 p.m., you just want to go out and you just want to let the product to production, and we can avoid that, and this is super important in the front end. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just type the same, I'm going to go to the client, I'm going to do jar and generate, and I'm going to go out to generate all the types based in my GraphQL schema, and I'm going to return. Uh, we're we're, we're going to see here the div, where we are going to get all the types, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we've got it. And, and now we're going to return data, and we're going to see how we can get a runtime, let's say, racket, uh, a runtime check regarding this, uh, uh, this problem and this issue. So we can see here that we've got like 500 lines, and we're going to have the launches pass with ID, mission name, details, link, and racket. Uh, the images and the name. So here now, in order to finish this talk, what I'm going to do is like just type this. I'm going to say get launches dot query, and here we are going to see that we've got in runtime a uh, check in order to fix this problem. So even the same, I can do just control space, and I know that it's a rocket. So now when I'm saving, I'm passing from a non-consistent step of my UI to a uh, 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 and a working version of it. And uh, in order to say that if we are able to introspect our API from the graphic graphic which basically is like an, uh, a web application, I think it could be really cool if we could introspect our API also from our IDE. So as a developer, I don't want to leave the IDE never. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use the Apollo GraphQL Visa Core extension in order to be able to see the fields available in my API from my IDE. So uh, I have to have an Apollo config, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to load the, uh, um, the schema from, from, the, from, from the GraphQL schema, and so I'm going to be able to introspect it. And let's say that I want to build my API in a type safe way. So what I'm going to do basically is like just click Control Space. Uh, OK, it's not working. Something happens. And um, so basically here we should get the, let me just do it, do it again. OK, cool. So now uh, what is happening here is like we are introspecting our GraphQL schema. And so I'm going to be able to see the different fields that I'm going to have available in my API. So to finish this talk, I want to just evolve my API. Let's say that I'm a junior engineer, and I'm going to start tomorrow in a new company. And I don't know anything about GraphQL. I don't know anything about the spaces GraphQL API. But someone just opened a ticket in order to display the zips. So I'm gonna just, I just going to go here, and I'm going to do control space. I'm going to look, oh, I need zips. Oh, there is zips. Ah, I need to put more information. So let's say the ID, the name, the, um, uh, let's say the port. And even I want to just like create an alias for it and an image. And now when I'm saving this, what is going to happen? I'm going to auto-generate the types from the new evolution about my schema. And if we go to the types, we are going to see how we are going to get the new data that we have requested for, uh, uh, that it should be somewhere here. Let me check. OK, now we've got it. So we have seen here the, the chain. So we're going to get the SIPs, and the SIP is going to contain that in important image. So uh, to finish off, what, uh, it, let's say that I want to just display them. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to uh, do control space. I'm going to get my SIPs. And that's pretty cool, because even I don't, know, I, I don't have to do console logs about the request API that I'm doing. So I'm going to just do SIPs. This is an array, so I can do dot. And TypeScript, now there is an, an array, so they are going to show me all the methods that are there available in order to display this. I'm going to just uh, uh, filter some result, and I'm going to just iterate it. And uh, we are going to just display something like this is going to be a div, right? Uh, but then the zip, it contains some graphical primitive types, gra graphical complex types. So we can know also about this type. So what I'm going to do right now is like just put control space. And I'm going to have auto completion about the internal types of that zip, which is going to be a D. It is going to be uh, a name. It is going to be a port. And it's going to be an image. Um, and so, just if, if I want to do just 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 to finish, I want to just put a key that is going to be an ID, and then basically we just can autocomplete log it. So it's going to be an H3, and we can just put here uh, the name of it and a paragraph with the port, and then we can just put the image with the image of the rocket, and then we are going to just put a width here. 
And the cool thing is like now when I'm saving here, uh, if I don't get any runtime error, I know when I'm switching back to the UI, even I didn't have to leave to do like any console log, check any documentation, I know that that is gonna work. So if we go back, we can see here that we've got the different ports from the, uh, where the, the, spe the specs rocket they are gonna land whenever they are coming back to the Earth. So, uh, 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 so pretty useful, end-to-end -end type safety. I really recommend you guys to, as we are typing backends, we should type front end with all this incredible developer experience. So uh, that's everything for me. So Maxi Baku and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. And then you can find me afterwards or at SW Carlos Ari in the internet. And you've got the slides with that QR code. Thanks so, thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Yeah, that talk always blows my mind. Makes me want to have type safety in everything. <laughs> in your life. <laughs> but, and those projects are actually open source, right? So you've got them on your repos so people can download them and try them. Yeah, everything is in uh, GitHub, so feel free to check it out, all the source code uh, from the GraphQL API, the, uh, the REST, alternative REST API with all the types, all the tooling, uh, so feel free to check it out. There are like also code examples with React, Vue, and Angular example how to fetch data with the GraphQL APIs. Wow, that's great. Are there any questions? Uh, there's one question I had for you. Maybe you can just touch on briefly, then we can, we can head off to coffee break. Uh, you mentioned briefly about the guild with GraphQL. Can you mention really uh, briefly what that actually is? And yeah, so um, I really want to appreciate this a company called the Guild that they basically they are, I think, like five to six developers. They are open source. The, all the stuff that they're doing is open source, so they are kind of basically maintaining a lot of libraries uh, within the GraphQL ecosystem, so from GraphQL code, auto code generator uh, to GraphQL modules, GraphQL CLI, and a lot of bunch of uh, 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 um, uh, open source library, everything is open source. Everything's by the name of the developer. I'm not working with that, but uh, it's incredible to see how people can contribute to the community that much uh, without getting, getting almost anything of it. So uh, I think what I also what I like from the community of the GraphQL is like they're like super passionate developers that they like to contribute and, and help each other with, with new ideas or new, new tooling. Great, thank you. So, I believe it is coffee time, or tea if that's your thing, and we will meet back at, I left my schedule down there, but I think it's at 11, let me just check.